Today on Studio One, part of everyone's monthly phone bill helps pay for service to rural areas. We'll tell you why some want to get rid of this added fee. Also, the sound from a pipe organ can fill an auditorium. We'll watch as a professor shares his tips with a class of organists. And coaches often tell athletes to focus on a goal. We'll sit in with a person who doubles as a golf course employee and a human target. From the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, this is Studio One. Hello everyone and welcome to Studio One. I'm Monty Cashel. And I'm Jenna Lynn. Well, a lot of people like to get out as soon as spring comes and the driving ridges open up in the golf course, they're out there hitting those balls. I'm not a huge golfer myself. You ever... I'm not, I play minister golf every once every in a while. Once, yeah. Yeah. So you've swung a club at least, yeah. right? <laughs> well, there are some golf courses that are just gorgeous and we're going to feature one of them on our program today. It's found in Medora, North Dakota and it's called the Bully Pulpit Golf Course. It's one of the best in the nation and uh, we're going to talk to somebody who knows all about that. So that's coming up in the show. Also, more couples are finding that the bundle of joy they were planning on has doubled We'll tell you why twins are becoming more common in the U.S. Also, people will often visit a doctor if they cannot get over a cold or flu. Unfortunately, there are also many Americans that don't have that option. One woman will tell us why so many people are without health care. But first, here's today's news with Mariah Torney. Thank you, Monty and Jenna. If some senators have it their way, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, also known as FEMA, could soon be finished. A bipartisan panel of senators wants to abolish the agency and start over. In its report, the Senate committee blames FEMA for much of the failed response to Hurricane Katrina. The senators say it also led to a number of deaths. They say the disaster exposed flaws in the Emergency Management Agency that are too big to fix. FEMA has become a symbol of a bumbling bureaucracy in which the American people have completely lost faith. While some senators want FEMA dissolved, President Bush says the federal response in the upcoming hurricane season will be as effective as possible. Bush made a visit to New Orleans Thursday. It was the president's 11th visit to the region since Hurricane Katrina. Much of New Orleans is still lacking basic services and is piled with debris. Summer is a popular time to travel, but high gas prices could cause many people to stay home. The Energy Department expects gas prices to jump at least 25 cents per gallon by the end of the summer. During the summer, gas prices tend to rise because more people are on the road. Economists say another reason for high fuel costs is the situation in the Middle East. They say concerns over Iran's nuclear program has some worried about a steady supply of oil. If these price hikes continue, many are concerned they could have an even greater effect in the future. Fuel costs will tend to slow down not only our economy, but the rest of the world's economies. And that obviously has an impact here at home. Gunner says continued increases in the price of gas could also drive up the cost of many products. Outsourcing may save less money than originally expected. A recent study by an outsourcing advisory firm found that companies save only about 15% by sending jobs overseas. The study disproves market claims that outsourcing can reduce costs by more than 60%. Several U.S. companies say they are also trying to improve quality by contracting with countries like India and China. Outsourcing has almost doubled worldwide since 2004. Since 1934, Americans have been paying into a fund that helps pay for rural telephone service. But now some members of Congress want to abolish this subsidy. Steve speaking. For Steve Williams and many like him, phone service is essential. Well, the telephone is very important to us for uh, communications, obviously, about things for we need for the farm. In remote areas, it can be a matter of life and death. If uh, someone gets hurt, the safety aspect is, is uh, very important also. I have to call at 7 o'clock in DC. The fee known as the Universal Service Fund is used to subsidize rural telephone service, but some say the cost is too high. Puts light on the fiber optic cable. General Manager Ron Lockway of Halstead Telephone Company disagrees. He says the fee is essential. The business that goes on here in our service area 
uh, benefits those in the in the large areas just as much as they benefit from us we benefit from them we all need each other that's universal service he says keeping the universal service fund will eliminate the potential for high prices our end users could end up paying well over a hundred dollars approaching two hundred dollars for their just for their dial tone service Steve says cell phones are a nice alternative but they're not a replacement for the landline as a basic telephone service, they're not reliable enough at the present time. And if you need two lines, what are you going to have? One, a cell phone in each hand? He says if the fund is eliminated, many people like himself could not afford it. I don't know what we do to tell you the truth. It's, uh, it's just essential that we have it. And uh, I would have a hard time living in the rural area. For Studio One News, I'm Sean Engel reporting. The Universal Service Fund accounts for roughly 11% of your monthly service fee, not including long distance. And that's the news for now. Monty and Jenna. Thanks, Mariah. Well, it is, uh, cell phones have been, you know, great in some instances where if uh, weather's really bad, you're in the middle of nowhere in a rural but place. But if it goes dead, you don't really that's true. know what to do. That's true. Gotta have that do. landline. Right. But we're going to go back to weather, and Matt is going to tell us about the weather in the rest of the nation. Well, you know, the last couple of weeks, it seems like all I've been talking about is how warm it's been here across our viewing area. And you know what? It was warm again this last week. We just seem to be stuck in this pattern above average temperatures. These are your average temperatures that you usually experience this time of year, and those are really nice, but we've been seeing a lot warmer temperatures. So that's good news for all you people out there that like the weather, like to get outside and enjoy the outdoors. It looks like it may continue on here as we go into the month of May as well. Well, you're all in for a treat because we got some pretty amazing video of some tornadoes down in Oklahoma. They actually had some aerial shots of some tornadoes that were not quite what you usually expect. Usually tornadoes spin counterclockwise, and that's, if you can imagine, a clock going around backwards. That's the way tornadoes usually spin. But this tornado was actually spinning clockwise. And take a look at that shot right there. That just shows you the, the length of the tornado. But this thing was actually spinning clockwise, which is very unusual. Out of the usual year, you usually have 1,200 tornadoes reported in the US. And only a couple of you usually have reported spinning clockwise rotation. This one didn't have a lot of damage with it. But I'm going to show you how a tornado develops. And it develops with updrafts in the weather. We have air that rises, and when it condenses, it forms a cloud. But if you have a strong enough updraft, you begin to see the cloud grow in height, and that's when you begin to see thunderstorms possibly occurring. And once this air goes up, it's got to go somewhere. It's not going to keep going up. It eventually comes down, and this is what we call a downdraft with a thunderstorm. And this is very important because this is what gives us the winds with these thunderstorms. But these winds, they mix around up here, and they, they mix around, and they get rotation going in the upper levels of these clouds. If we take a look at this cloud from straight up above, these winds come into the storm, and what we begin to see is a lot of rotation begins to take place. And depending on which side of the, these upper level winds you're on, is that's going to affect the direction of these tornadoes, that, that counterclockwise rotation or the, or the clockwise rotation. And usually it's a clockwise rotation that's a little bit more weaker, but in the case of that Oklahoma tornado, that is what happened. Well, now we're going to quiz you a little bit of trivia about what was the record of the widest tornado in the US. And it looks like all those would be a gigantic twister. And with those storms in Oklahoma, we also had some other weather, and we'll show you that later on in the show. All right, sounds interesting. Thanks. Wow, some of those figures on there were pretty big for a well, tornado. Yeah, the <laughs> smallest choice we had was a mile wide. I mean, yeah. that's huge. <laughs> All right, well, it's time now to go to sports. Uh, Nathan Shane has that. Thank you, Monty and Jenna. Phoenix newspapers are reporting that the son, Steve Nash, will receive the MVP award for the second straight year. If true, he would beat out a deep pool of candidates, including the Lakers' Kobe Bryant. But Nash and the Suns can't be concerned with awards right now, as they have Bryant and the Lakers to get past in the playoffs. And they are up 1-0 in the series. Game 2 tempers flare between the two MVP candidates. This one means a lot. We'll pick it up in the third quarter. Steve Nash makes the layup and is fouled. Lakers still up by 10 at this point. Fourth quarter now, Lakers up seven, and the hustle gets Kobe Bryant the ball, and he would dunk it in a punctuation point over Steve Nash. Lakers up three and rolling. In the fourth quarter still, pass to Smoosh Parker who gets the layup. Lakers win 99-93. Onto the Grizzlies and the Mavericks. Second quarter, Mavs 
coach getting the coach of the year award there. But Mike Miller making it close for the Grizzlies. Gets the layup to go. Memphis up. Second corner now. Dallas up three. Dirk Nowitzki would get the ball and hits the jumper. And look on their bottom right or left hand. Even the cl clown is excited there. He had 31 points on the night. Mavericks up five and rolling. Nowitzki finds Jason Terry in the corner. Hits it at the buzzer. That's just the kind of night they had. Mavs win 94 to 79. Since 1972, Title IX has provided equal opportunity for women to play sports in high schools and universities. But new policy changes have some worried that Title IX might be weakened. The Department of Education has issued a new policy that will allow schools to gain, gauge female student interest in sports based on email surveys. Failure, failure to respond to the survey shows a lack of interest in playing sports and then funding for women's athletics would be reduced. Many people are concerned that students will confuse this survey with you know, email spam. A, an accurate response from students are they all going to take it. And uh, a lot of times the students have a lot of other things to be do. <laughs> well, high school kids have a lot of things going on other than answering surveys and questions. The NCAA says there are five times as many female college athletes today when there was when Title IX first began. And it's now time for the Studio One Sports Trivia question. And today we want to know, what was the first televised sport in the U.S.? Was it baseball, tennis, golf, or hockey? And we'll have the answer to that question, plus some more sports later on in the show. Monty and Jenna. Thanks a lot, Nathan. Nearly five years after the events of September 11th, a film based on that infamous day is hitting the big screen. We'll preview United 93 later in the show. Also, people may say they can deal with the pain if going to the doctor is not in their budget. However, this is not the best way to deal with an ailment. Our next guest will tell you about the medical options of people without health insurance. Need to plan an entire conference? Want to provide your employees with professional training and development? The Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota provides quality programs and services for career enhancement. Whether you want to attend educator workshops or need a certificate for your profession, the Division of Continuing Education can help you achieve success. Contact the Division of Continuing Education today and let us meet your professional needs. George Bull and his partners found value in farina, the whitest part of wheat, and created cream of wheat. Patrick Haggerty founded Texas Instruments and helped it become one of the nation's high-tech giants. Raymond Rood is responsible for the modern diving board. His diving boards have been used in every Olympic competition since 1960. Chris Moen and Marlene Schott launched their food company through the UND Entrepreneurship Program. Will yours be next? The University of North Dakota Alumni Association and Foundation, together with thousands of alumni and friends, are making a difference at UND. Thanks to generous private support, many students have experienced the rich history, tradition, and spirit of the University of North Dakota. UND alumni and friends understand the importance of education and are proud to be part of UND's growth and success. Learn how your gift to the UND Foundation can benefit you and your university. You can make a difference. Advance your career with a graduate business degree from the University of North Dakota. The Graduate School at UND offers a variety of master's degrees that can help you stand out in the competitive business world. Our programs accommodate full-time students as well as working professionals. Our state-of-the-art facilities, dedicated faculty, and entrepreneurial training position graduates for careers as business leaders. Make your move towards a business leadership position. Contact the UND Graduate School today. Tradition runs deep among American Indian people. One of those traditions is helping others. At the University of North Dakota, American Indian Student Services is dedicated to helping students succeed. Our support services include tutoring and financial aid assistance. We have more American Indian programs than any other university in the U.S., making UND a leader in Indian education. Be a part of our tradition. Call 1-800-CALL-UND. You're watching Studio One, news, weather, sports, and entertainment. In 2001, Americans spent almost $1.5 trillion on health care. In only a decade, it will double. 
Many people are with no health insurance because of the expense. Tina Anderson is the director for a special clinic that helps the uninsured and builds awareness about this problem. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having um, me here. I know that a lot of the population probably isn't even aware of this problem, but why are there so many people with, without health insurance? Healthcare costs are astronomically expensive, and that is the main reason. I mean, people can't afford it. Eight out of 10 Americans are in un the working poor families. I mean, they're working, but not enough, you know, make, make enough money for, for health care. What is being done to help bring awareness about this problem? Well, Third Street Clinic is being a part of a national initiative um, funded by the Robert Wood Foundation um, called Cover the Uninsured Week, and it's May 1 through 6, and we are going around doing press releases and, and visits and, and magazine articles, things like that, just, just to try and create awareness that this is a national problem, not just a local one, it's national. Are there a lot of programs available, such as the Third Street Clinic, to help people with no health insurance? Not to my knowledge. There, I don't think there really is a, a great deal out there. Um, Third Street Clinic is the only clinic of its kind in the United States. So what do you guys do to help people? Um, we, the clientele will come to us and we will screen them for eligibility, which means they can't have um, any kind of health insurance um, and they fall into a um, income guideline and then we can get them assistance with physicians, emergency dental care, um, limited prescriptions. So there could be a lot of people just, everyday people just walk into the door. Are there any restrictions to this, pro this program? Um, the income guideline is the main restrict restriction. Um, we go by 150% of federal poverty, which means one individual can make about 14,000 in a year. So how are doctors and medical care providers being responsive to this? Um, all the physicians that work with Third Street Clinic donate their services to us, along with all the dentists in Grand Forks and East Grand Forks and the specialists donate their services to us. And we have some optometrists that donate their services to us. And then the pharmacists sell their medication to us at cost. I know you said prescription drugs. What are the limitations on what you can, I mean, are there limitations to giving those out? I mean, if people will they could abuse them? Yes, yes, there's a lot of limitations with that. Um, we have a staff, or a, um, board members um, who are pharmacists, physicians, dentists. They get together and they create what we call our formulary, which is a list of medications that we can help with. And anything off of that list, we would need a medical director's approval. P so can people can get help for the rest of their lives off this program? As long as they qualify, yes. Now the prescriptions themselves, we will only help with six months at a time because there's so many other programs out there um, through North Dakota itself and through the, the federal government that they can get onto for assistance. So we will help with about six months. How did you become so involved to uh, help people with this program? Um, it, it, it's kind of near and dear to my heart and I'm, there. <laughs> I just get excited. I have such a passion for it. Um, I have a very good life and I enjoy helping other people so that they can do it. And I apologize, I'm getting teary. It just makes me happy. Well, thank you so much for coming <laughs> on the show. And I, I think that you are helping. It's a really good thing that you're helping all these other people. So It's, it's a wonderful organization. It's so incredible that we have so many professionals in our community that donate their services and work with Third Street Clinic. All right, well thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up, golf is a popular summertime sport across the country. Later we'll talk to someone who will tell us how North Dakota is becoming a hot spot for golfers. Also, while some walk the, these fairways to relax, others hit the course to earn their green fees. Next we'll spend a dangerous day in the life of a golf ball ranger. Studio One closed captioning is underwritten in part by Options, your disability information source. 
Earn a degree in engineering while you continue to work. The University of North Dakota's Distance Engineering Degree Program offers the only ABET accredited undergraduate degree program at a distance. Instructors and classes are delivered to you through online lectures and condensed on-campus laboratories. It's convenient, it's flexible, and it's a quality education. UND Continuing Education and the School of Engineering and Mines, teaming up to bring quality education to your door. Wall Street has come to the prairie through the A. Kirk Lannerman Investment Center at the University of North Dakota. This state-of-the-art facility in the College of Business and Public Administration provides hands-on experience in the world of modern finance. Students learn how financial markets react with lightning quickness to world events. They use cutting-edge technology and real-time data from more than 200 financial markets around the world. The Lanterman Investment Center provides the tools to make a career out of an education. There are many things to be found at the University of North Dakota School of Law. You will find a place with small class settings, an affordable place that offers student interaction with both the state and federal court systems. You will find a school that has averaged over 90% placement for its graduates the past five years. But most importantly, you will find the skills and experience you'll need throughout your legal career. Find your future at the University of North Dakota School of Law. Explore the educational opportunities available through the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. With just one phone call or a click of the mouse, you'll find high quality programs designed for today's adults. We have a large selection of continuing education courses that are available at a time and place that's convenient for you. Discover a world of learning through the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. The terrorism attacks of September 11, 2001 have forever changed the United States. This day has also left us many heroes. The film United 93 showcases the events of that day through the passengers of that flight and the controllers on the ground. The events depicted in the film take place in real time. Director Paul Greengrass says any films based on the events of September 11 should be made with modesty and care for the subject matter. The events on board Flight 93 hold us so powerfully because which of us hasn't read accounts of that story or seen television documentaries and wondered what that must have liked. A 20-year-old Boeing 757 was dismantled and used as one of the film's many sets. Many of the actors are the actual people playing themselves and much of the film's dialogue was improvised. United 93 opens April 28th. Now it's time to take a look at the events happening in your area. Golfers can practice their swing on the driving range at many golf courses. We found out they can sometimes also take a shot at the employees. Today we spend a day in the life of a golf ball ranger. Golf is a multi-million dollar industry. Most people golf to take a break from work. But when Jeff Carmodula gets to the driving range, his job has just begun. Jeff has many jobs at the course. He collects golf balls. On um, busy days, there's many, but I'd say like 30, 40 buckets. And maintains the golf ball dispenser. I've dropped my keys in there before. That took a while to get out. But along with these duties, Jeff also is a moving target on the course. Everybody's kind of gunning for me, and then when somebody hits me, it's just like a big roar throughout the whole crowd. Everyone just kind of starts cheering a little bit. And if you ask them, they'll tell you. They're trying to hit Jeff. Frankly, the only reason I come out to the uh, golfing range is to hit the driver of the golf course. You know, if he's out there picking up the balls, well, it's just target practice. But you don't have to be an expert to take a shot at Jeff. But little kids are even more apt to aim at you all the time. 
Way to go, you got it. Jeff says that he helps in making customers happy at the range. You can see a nice little smile on their face and they, they like to turn in my direction. Today at this course, these golfers are here to improve their swing, and Jeff provides the motivation. Reporting for Studio One, I'm Suzanne Schmidt. Jeff says along with golf balls, he's picked up wallets, phone, and clothes on the course. Coming up, there are a few instruments that need to be played with hands and feet. We'll sit in on a class that teaches people to coordinate both to make music. That story plus news, sports, and weather in the next half hour of Studio One. The School of Engineering and Mines at UND has a long history of preparing students for successful careers. Through small classes and faculty involvement, students have unique opportunities to gain hands-on experience. Here students launch a weather balloon to test a remote imaging device destined for Earth orbit. Students can also become involved in wind energy and fuel cell projects, design, build and race a Formula One car, or even develop a camera that will generate agricultural images from the International Space Station. Find out for yourself how you can get involved at UND School of Engineering and Mines. Do you need a flexible way to earn your degree? The University of North Dakota's Degrees After Hours program is designed to work around your full-time schedule. Whether you've got a family, a full-time job, or both, the Degrees After Hours program offers you flexible alternatives. You can earn a degree or take courses online through video conferencing and in the evenings or on weekends. UND's Degrees After Hours program fits your needs, your schedule, and your goals. Contact UND today. This can happen. Excuse me, can I get a ride? What? My car broke down. Can I get a ride? No, I can't help you. Look, it's just a ride. No, step back. Get in the car! No! <laughs> Women can defend themselves. To learn more about Impact U or to enroll in a class, call the UND Women's Center. From the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, this is Studio One. Welcome back to Studio One. Thanks for joining us today. Earlier in the show, we were talking about United 93, mm -hmm. the new movie that's coming out um, about 9-11. Yeah. Well, there's some controversy about it because some people are just so emotionally hurt still from this tragic event and they think it's too soon. Yeah, and some true. say, oh, we don't want to, you know, have people making money off of a tragedy. Right. Right, but it also could help us learn about other things, too. Mm -hmm. So we went out on the street to uh, find other opinions about what other people thought about this new movie. All right, those answers are coming up. Also, in the next 30 minutes on Studio One, it's becoming more common in the U.S. to have twins. We'll hear what life is like for two sets of similar-looking sisters. Also, the popularity of the pipe organ exploded in, in the early 20th century. We'll take you to a class that is determined to master this traditional instrument. And millions of people will be vacationing, the, vacationing in the upcoming summer months. We'll have someone tell us about a unique change of pace for families looking for fun. But first, here's today's news with Mariah Torning. Thank you, Monty and Jenna. Construction of the long-delayed Freedom Tower began Thursday at 9-11's Ground Zero. Developers intend for the Freedom Tower to be the tallest building in North America. The Freedom Tower will sit on the north end of the site and will be more than 1,300 feet tall, the same height as the Twin Towers. Symbols within the building will remind people of the events of September 11, 2001. The southern half of the site will be a memorial dedicated to those whose lives were lost. 
The coffin containing the first Australian soldier to die in Iraq was returned home Thursday. But when the soldier's wife went to review the body, she found that it was not her husband. The wrong body had been sent. The Australian Defence Minister has ordered that the right coffin be brought to Australia immediately. Private Jake Covco died in Baghdad on April 21st when his weapon accidentally discharged. Downloading is a popular way of getting music, but there could soon be some changes for those who like to get their favorite songs off the internet. More states may require websites to tax material that is downloaded. Legislatures are looking at digital downloading as a new source of revenue to meet budget shortfalls. About 15 states already tax downloads of music, movies, and electronic books, and many more are considering the idea. But some say it may push people to try to avoid the tax. And I think with adding the taxes to the, um, the downloads, I think that that's going to push maybe more and more people towards downloading music illegally. Online sales of music tripled from 2004 to 2005, climbing from 400 million to 1.1 billion worldwide. Parents who often wonder where their children are will soon have a new tool. Sprint Nextel has released a wireless service that allows parents to find their children's location on their computer or cell phone. The program uses the children's cell phone as a tracking device. Parents can also have text messages sent to them confirming that their children have arrived at their home or school. The price of the family locator service is about $10 a month. Sprint says it can work on as many as 30 cell phone models. Twins can be seen everywhere these days, and it has even become more common for people to have to do a double take. That's because multiple births are on the rise in America. <laughs> matching shoes, matching bikes, and even matching school pictures. It is hard to tell these two apart. That is, until you talk to them. I always have someone to play with, and I don't like being a twin. Megan and Aaron Schroyer are one dynamic duo, but they're not the only ones. According to the Center for the Study of Multiple Births, twins are on the rise in America. In 1971, one out of 60 infants born was part of a pair. The rate has increased to one out of 30 infants today. Those, those rates are going higher, and, and in some states they're seeing the same. Twins are common for women undergoing fertility treatments. As women age, their chances of naturally conceiving multiples also increases. Anna and Leva Hermes attend the same college, but for the first time are living apart. She's living upstairs and I'm living downstairs in the house, and that's like the farthest we've been apart. <laughs> Twins have a unique bond, which is why many find it hard to separate. We're best friends, so we pretty much do everything together. And that is often the case with the Schroyer sisters, but not all of the time. We get to fight each other at lunch if she sits across by me, but she never does. Put the best dancing on the other table all week. While they may sit at separate lunch tables, this pair plans to stay together in the future. I would like to do like anything I could do with my sister because I like it a lot and love it. And if this twin trend continues, it may be common to continue seeing double. <laughs> la, 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 la. Many states separate twins when they enter school. However, Minnesota recently passed a law allowing parents to choose whether or not their twins are split apart. And that's the news for now. Monty and Jenna? Thanks a lot, Mariah. Well, I know my mother's often told me she wouldn't want to have two of me. Hmm. I don't think... I don't think I would either. You just, so. Yeah, just no... <laughs> you're supposed to say no comment or something oh, like that. Oh, okay, no comment. <laughs> But we're going to go back to the weather studio and Matt is going to tell us about tornadoes. Yeah, earlier in the show we had the footage from Oklahoma about those tornadoes. That wasn't the only thing that it brought to those poor folks down in Oklahoma. We also saw some other, some crazy weather. Look at that. That was a lightning strike and it just blew up that transformer on the power pole there. Here it is again in slow motion and just amazing. But anyways, along with the storm they had a lot of hail. They had over 80 reports of hail across all the state of Oklahoma and some of it was pretty big. It looks like little meteorites hitting the ground there and here it gives you a reference. Now you usually think hail would be nice and smooth and round but it's not. That's all jagged and not very nice looking and it just goes to show that they can be very dangerous when it gets up to golf ball size and larger like they saw there. It can be very dangerous. Well earlier in the show we talked about the El Reno tornado. 
which is just west of Oklahoma City. Then there's also the, the tornado by Randall. And again, there was over 80 reports of hail across Oklahoma, so a lot of severe weather down there. Well, farmers in the Red River Valley of North Dakota and Minnesota face flooding every spring. These floods affect farmers long after the water recedes. Farmers are constantly dealing with a changing environment. This spring, farmers in the Red River Valley watched as many of their fields became temporary lakes. The high waters brought in debris like sticks, garbage, and a sandy-like soil known as silt. Most debris can be picked up, but silt poses more work for a farmer. If you do have any layer of it, that's usually what you have to do is just dig it in and, because otherwise there's nothing will grow in that. It looks bad along the river farms, but in other places it got even worse. So you see a lot of these township roads around here washed away and crossings into fields. and So it's all these added expenses to the farmer once the river has, has gone down. That was exactly the case for the farmer on this land. He had to dig into the ground to find clay and use that to rebuild a piece of his road. Spring is a busy time for farmers. During wet years with flooding fields, it can be even busier. With photographer Matt Benz, I'm Kira Dordal, reporting for Studio One. Well, some factors that can lead to overland flooding include rapid snowmelt and rainfall while the ground is still frozen. Well, earlier in the show, we asked you about the trivia. What is the widest tornado in the U.S. that was ever recorded in the U.S.? The answer is two and a half miles. That is absolutely enormous. It was a large F4 tornado. And just because the larger it is doesn't necessarily mean it's stronger. Is that really normal for them to be that big then? Is that the average, around the average for tornadoes? Most definitely not. And your average tornado is usually only about 50 yards wide. Okay. Well, thank you. Quite a difference. I'd kind of prefer the 50 yards one if yeah. I had to have a tornado. If you had to have a tornado <laughs> in your backyard, yeah, probably the smaller one, right? All right, well, let's go back to sports now with Nathan Chain. Thank you, Monty and Jenna. For most sports, a participant needs the proper equipment in order to play the game. But for one pastime, you need the right hunting gear, and most importantly, a four-legged friend to lead the way. Kurt Eikhoff loves to hunt. But it isn't just the thrill of the kill that keeps him coming back to the fields every year. Like many other hunters, what Eikhoff loves most is watching his hunting dog, Bretta, in action. Bretta, 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 whoa, Bretta! It's more important to me just to kind of have the, the full hunting experience and watch the dog work and and uh, that's more enjoyable now. To showcase Bretta's skills, Eikhoff, along with several other hunters, entered their dogs in a competition. Five birds released in the bird field, and the dogs and the, and the handler, the hunter, will have 30 minutes to find those birds. Um, and they get scored on retrieve, they get scored on point. But Kurt and Bretta are up against some stiff competition. Like fellow hunter William Uther and his dog Susie, who William loves for more than just her hunting skills. I've had dogs quite a few over the years, and she has never chewed anything up, ever. I can leave her in my car and there's still a steering wheel there. <laughs> After numerous heart surgeries, William says watching Susie is one of the reasons he decided to return to hunting. At the competition, William wants to show what he's been saying about Susie all along. I'd say she's the best. And perhaps take home the bragging rights of best in show. But with 10 other hunters besides Kurt and William, they will have to put their best paw forward and hope for the best. This is Rachel Cutcliffe for Studio One Sports. The competition had a total of 24 hunters taking part. 12 participated in the pointer dog division and the other half were involved in the retriever division. And now it's time for the answer to this week's Studio One Sports Trivia question. And again, the question is, what was the first televised sport in the U.S.? And the answer is baseball and that happened on May 17, 1939 between Princeton and Columbia. And by the way, Princeton won the game 2-1. to one. And that's the sports, Monty and Jenna. Thanks, Nathan. Each year, about 120,000 children are adopted in the U.S. Later, we'll meet two parents who traveled thousands of miles to meet their new daughter. Also, there is an instrument that, that sounds at home both in a church and at a baseball park. We'll sit in on a class full of students who are learning the ins and outs of the pipe organ. When you graduate from college, what will you be able to offer an employer? Well, I'm a really good people person. 
I really love working with people. I'm very, very motivated. I'm a great people person. I am really motivated. Offer an employer something more. At the University of North Dakota Career Services Center, we can help you get the competitive edge you need. Stop in or check us out. UND Career Services, empowering students to realize their dreams. Did I mention I'm great with people? The University of North Dakota College of Business and Public Administration offers real degrees for real people. Our nationally recognized faculty can help you earn a master's degree in business through evening classes. Taking these evening classes were very convenient for me and that's how I was able to complete the program. We offer degrees for people who work, raise families and lead busy lives. The UND College of Business and Public Administration, real degrees for real people. The School of Engineering and Mines at UND offers students exceptional learning opportunities. Undergraduates are helping faculty design and build unmanned aerial vehicles to test remote imaging devices. They're also converting wind energy into hydrogen. Geological science students are contributing to environmental research. Extracurricular activities include designing, building, and racing a fuel cell car. Make the most of your college experience at UND's School of Engineering and Mines. Let the University of North Dakota become your partner by providing your business with services to enhance your workforce. The UND Office of Workforce Development has extensive experience conducting employee satisfaction research, strategic planning, focus groups, and grant development. Call us for further information. Workforce Development, a service of the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. You're watching Studio One, your source for news, weather, sports, and entertainment. People have different reasons for adopting a child into their family. In recent years, foreign adoption has become more popular. One family was willing to travel across the world to pick up a special girl. <laughs> Phil nasty. and Lori Kramer have always dreamed of having a large family. Phil decided that four boys and a girl just wasn't enough. You know, I had thought that we had room for one more and probably love for one more and had uh, talked to Lori tried to convince her she was kind of cool to the idea at first. We, we went, were gone for 17 days and then we came home and everyone met us at the airport and it was a very, very exciting time. Oh, Phil and Lori flew all the way to China to pick up their new baby girl, Marie. Marie, like most children at an orphanage, uh, are, are abandoned children. Before being adopted by the Kramers, Marie's future was uncertain. Marie was found by the orphanage gate in a little box and uh, she had a little red paper in with her box. So we know her birth date, but that's all we know about her family. The rest we can only guess at. In China, you cannot give a child up for adoption. They must be completely abandoned for the orphanages to take them in. The Kramers say they have gained a lot since bringing Marie home. For us, this little girl has been uh, something that's drawn us closer together. She's just like one of the rest of us. There, isn't, there really isn't any differences between her and the rest of us kids. I'm visiting Dad. Phil and Lori say the adoption process can be tedious at times, but the reward is definitely worth it. Once you get your little girl, it's just amazing. The Kramers are so pleased with their decision to adopt from China that they will be returning this fall for another baby. Reporting for Studio One, I'm Gina Kalemi. About 95% of the adoptions out of China are girls. Due to overpopulation, China has a one-child policy that enforces fines for a second child. Most families cannot afford the fine and would prefer to have a boy. A recent movie has been raising a lot of controversy. United 93 is about the events of September 11, 2001 and the flight of passengers who fought terrorists on their plane. Some say this movie is coming out too soon, while others are hoping to learn more about that day. We wanted your thoughts about the movie. I think it's important for our country not to forget what happened and what those people did to help, you know, bring down the planes. They shouldn't be doing it. They're just making money off a tragedy. They got the people that died there for, they are doing something, but why are we making money off it? I think it's ridiculous that they keep bringing up 9-11 because there are a lot of families that lost loved ones. I, I think it might give us some insight into what was actually happening on that plane that day because I think we all wondered 
and uh, I think there were a lot of heroes on those planes. Everybody's become lackadaisical, they're forgetting what's going on. Bin Laden's on the TV, they just got a new tape, he's still threatening. Teachers use many tools to help their students in the classroom. For some, however, the tools and even the classroom are anything but traditional. Going that line that goes down. Most of us were taught that, that the alphabet up. goes from A to Z. Christopher Anderson's students know differently. Their alphabet begins with A but ends with G. Christopher is a university music professor. Although his classes are usually held on campus, he also teaches outside the classroom. Christopher has learned to play a variety of instruments. However, one in particular caught his attention early on. I was always fascinated with mechanical things and machines and things, um, and that's how I got interested in it. It was, uh, uh, it was sort of a mystery. When he was five years old, he began taking piano lessons in order to prepare for his future passion. The pipe organ. As he continued to learn, it became apparent that there was more to playing than meets the ear. Particularly with the organ, you have to realize that the, that the acoustical environment in which the instrument sits is part of the instrument itself. Um, it's like the bugle of a trumpet is the resonator of the trumpet. The bugle of the organ is the, is the building in which it sits. The height of an organ's pipes can range anywhere from less than an inch high to a staggering 64 feet. Due to their size and cost, organs of this magnitude are rarely seen. Since a pipe organ contains many foot pedals and more finger keys than a normal piano, it can be more difficult to play. Christopher suggests starting with the piano or harpsichord. Although he can teach his students how to play the organ, there is sometimes more to learn than what's printed on paper. The way he interprets the music, he's totally committed to the the text to the poetry of the hymn and then behind that to the biblical passage. While some enjoy the meaning behind the music, others simply have a love for the sound. I love the variety of the organ. I love the many sounds that it can get. I love the different moods that it can create. Um, it's called the king of instruments. It just has so many sounds just uh, with, within the one instrument and that's exciting. The family will soon be moving to Dallas, where Christopher has accepted a new teaching position. And although he will be in a new city and have new students, the lessons he's taught this group will be left behind. I'm Virginia Sticka, reporting for Studio One. Christopher says one of his most memorable experiences was performing at the Washington National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. Coming up, it's time to break out the drivers, putters, and tees. Next, we'll speak to someone who will tell us about a special place where the game of golf is an exceptional experience. Studio One closed captioning is underwritten in part by University of North Dakota Student Government. Your voice, our mission. The College of Business and Public Administration at the University of North Dakota is proud to announce the Page Family Marketing Center. A gift from alumni Greg and Cindy Page, this center promises real-world experiences as students begin careers in marketing. The center includes a specially designed conference room for focus group research. An adjacent lab offers real-time access to software and data for marketing decisions. The Page Family Marketing Center, your next step in marketing. Tradition runs deep among American Indian people. One of those traditions is helping others. At the University of North Dakota, American Indian Student Services is dedicated to helping students succeed. Our support services include tutoring and financial aid assistance. We have more American Indian programs than any other university in the U.S., making UND a leader in Indian education. Be a part of our tradition. Call 1-800-CALL-UND. 
Earn a degree in engineering while you continue to work. The University of North Dakota's Distance Engineering Degree Program offers the only ABET accredited undergraduate degree program at a distance. Instructors and classes are delivered to you through online lectures and condensed on-campus laboratories. It's convenient, it's flexible, and it's a quality education. UND Continuing Education and the School of Engineering and Mines. Teaming up to bring quality education to your door. No matter what your schedule, no matter when you work, no matter what job you have now, this is your opportunity to accomplish your goals. Degrees After Hours at the University of North Dakota can work around your busy schedule. Bachelor and Master's degrees are earned through convenient, flexible, and high quality classes. Complete degrees are available online through correspondence study and on weekends and evenings. Earn a degree on your terms with Degrees After Hours at the University of North Dakota. Summer weather is here and millions will soon be taking vacations. Many families go camping, visit historical sites, or just practice favorite summer activities like golf. There's a new golf course in North Dakota that's getting a lot of attention. Wade Weston works for the Theodore Roosevelt Medora Foundation. He's going to tell us about this special golf course and more about Medora. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us about this new golf course. It's called the Bully Pulpit Golf Course. What makes it unique? Well, it's, uh, it's located right in the North Dakota Badlands, and uh, that would have to be uh, the one thing that sets it apart from other courses, is the, the spectacular, uh, beautiful setting that it's in. And the Badlands are quite drastically different from the rest of the, of the state. They are. There's uh, just uh, a wide array of colors that the Badlands have and uh, great elevation changes as well, which adds to the flavor of the golf. Okay. What kind of attention has, uh, has the golf course gotten? Well, uh, the first year that it was open, Golf Magazine named it uh, one of the top 10 best new courses in the country. And then uh, this year in January, uh, uh, Bully Pulpit was named America's best new affordable public golf course by Golf Digest. Okay, all right. So some great national attention. Well, what does Bully Pulpit mean? Where, where the heck did you get that name from? Uh, that goes back to Theodore Roosevelt's time in the White House. That's what he called the White House. It was where he was able to uh, talk about his issues that he wanted. And um, so uh, one of the uh, national golf writer was actually out in Medora and said, uh, they were up on hole 15 and he said, you know, this is your bully pulpit. This is where every golfer makes their statement. And the course hadn't been named yet and everyone looked at each other and that's it. And <laughs> it has a tie back to our organization, the Theodore Roosevelt Medora Foundation. and. Uh, and so it stuck. Okay. Well, many people outside of the state might not think of North Dakota as a golf destination. Uh, what is making North Dakota begin to be become a destination for golfers? Well, uh, North Dakota has some fantastic golf. Uh, Hawk Tree in Bismarck, for instance. The links of North Dakota, uh, formerly known as Red Mike up by Williston. Um, there's also, uh, of course, the wonderful course you have uh, in Grand Forks, uh, uh, the Arnold Palmer course. And, uh, it's the combination of all of these great golf courses, as well as a lot of wonderful uh, small nine-hole and 18-hole courses spread throughout the state. And we just saw uh, mm -hmm. a picture of, of three specific uh, golf destinations, and mm -hmm. that's called... Uh, well, we've we formed the Triple Golf Challenge between Hawk Tree uh, in Bismarck, the Lynx uh, by Williston, and Bully Pulpit, where okay. golfers can golf all three basically for the price of two. Well, and how are those three courses different? Is it the same kind of experience? Or? No, it's, uh, it's quite different. Hawk Tree is uh, rolling planes and uh, has a very challenging golf course. Bully Pulpit, as we mentioned, is in the Badlands. And then the Lynx of North Dakota is, uh, plays right along uh, water and it plays like a traditional Lynx style course. So mm -hmm. uh, the golfer gets a, a distinct uh, different experience at each, each location. Okay. Any other reasons North Dakota is a good destination for golfers? Well, uh, the, the climate is uh, a big issue with uh, our uh, summers being uh, so nice. Uh, you know, the golf destinations throughout the country, like in South Carolina or North Carolina in the summer, they're battling heat and humidity. Uh, it's great weather up in North Dakota, so uh, people that enjoy golfing those, they can 
golf them uh, in the other seasons and then come up to North Dakota for the summer. All right. Well, and, and getting back to Bully Pulpit, it's set in Medora uh, near the town. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that because that's also a tourist destination. Right. It's uh, one of the uh, top places to visit in North Dakota. There's a lot, uh, a lot of things to see and do. The Theodore Roosevelt National Park South Unit is there. Some great hiking and uh, biking through the park. There's a great wildlife viewing. What's the most popular attraction in Medora, you think? Uh, well, I'm a little bit biased. I, I have to say the Medora Musical. Uh, that sees uh, over 110,000 people each summer. Uh, it's uh, been going on for more than 40 years now. Uh, the show's new each year, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there's certain things that always uh, maintain the same. It's always uh, a great family uh, show to uh, bring everyone to. What, what kind of setting is it? Give us a sense of what it would be like in the middle of, of the summer season in Medora. Uh, for the musical specifically or for well, even just going in through the town well it's uh, it's kind of a quaint old west uh, town with uh, some modern amenities you can uh, stay in a hotel but uh, still enjoy the flavor of the old west you can go on a buggy ride go horseback riding uh, and you can really experience the outdoors in Medora there's some unique experiences the outdoor Medora musical performed in the Badlands uh, golf in the Badlands you've got the Mata Hay Trail a mountain biking adventure uh, just a lot of fun things to do outdoors. If people want to find out more information, how can they do that? Uh, call 1-800-MEDORA-1. They can make all the reservations or they can get a free visitor's guide or they can go online at medora.com. And uh, new this year, they're able to also uh, uh, reserve their tea times online as well. All right, excellent. Thanks so much for coming on the show today, Wade. Thank you, Monty. Well, you're watching Studio One from the University of North Dakota. We'll be back right after this. The UND College of Business and Public Administration is reaching out to rural America. The Government Rural Outreach Initiative is working to connect North Dakota veterans with important information. North Dakota veterans can use the internet to access employment and business resources, health and benefits they deserve, housing information, and much more. The Government Rural Outreach Initiative is funded in part by the North Dakota Congressional Delegation. North Dakota veterans and their families can get connected by visiting go.ndgrow.com. Become a leader in healthcare with a graduate degree from the University of North Dakota. The Graduate School at UND offers degree programs and advanced practice certificate programs in the allied health professions and nursing. Our faculty give you the individual attention you need to help you attain your career goals. Distance programs for practicing professionals allow you to pursue graduate studies without interrupting your career. Contact the UND Graduate School today. When you graduate from college, what will you be able to offer an employer? Well, I love working with people. I'm a people person. I consider myself to be highly motivated. I'm a real self-starter. Offer an employer something more. At the University of North Dakota Career Services Center, we can help you get the competitive edge you need. Stop in or check us out. UND Career Services, empowering students to realize their dreams. I can offer you much more than just good people skills. You're hired. This can happen. Excuse me, can I get a ride? What? My car broke down. Can I get a ride? No, I can't help you. Look, it's just a ride. No, step back. Get in the car! No! <laughs> Women can defend themselves. To learn more about Impact U or to enroll in a class, call the UND Women's Center. Thanks for watching our program. We will be taking a break until September, but we'll have more great stories for you then. Well, we're going to leave you now with pictures of our cast and crew. From all of us here at Studio One, have a great summer.